This past Thursday was observed as Holocaust Remembrance Day. 67 years after the Nazi concentration camps were liberated, camps where more than six million men, women, and children, one third of the Jewish people were murdered. Almost seven decades later, there are many who claim the Holocaust never happened. Anti-Semitism is on the rise and genocide remains a reality in some parts of the world. All of this abhorrent to Max Liebman, who was 21 years old when he was freed from a camp in France he lost his family. He is currently the senior vice president of the American Gathering of Jewish Holocaust Survivors and their descendants in the U.S., the foremost umbrella organization of survivors. Welcome. Good to have you with us. I'm glad to be here. It would seem, by my talking about the rise in anti-Semitism, the deniers, that the world hasn't changed much in the, in the past 67 no, years. No, particularly if you listen to somebody like the Iranian people. The Iranian manage, uh, uh, government. President Ahmadinejad who yeah. denies it occurred, but he's, yeah. he's not alone. What, what do you make of this? Why do you believe in the face of so much evidence people are even out there su suggesting that this didn't happen? I think it is for personal gain. They profit by saying this to a group of their own. And your, your emotions as someone who's gone through the camps and lost the mother and father? in the war? Look, I'm a realist. I can't stop people from saying things they know is wrong. It's incorrect. And how do you respond to them? If you were to look one of these deniers in the face, Mr. Liebman, what would you say to them, someone who survived the camp? I would probably tell them they are full of you know what, because they know better. There is inter, in, uh, interconvertible uh, evidence that it happened. So all they have to do is look at the records and say, how can they say there was uh, no Holocaust? Sure. The Germans are very good at keeping records. So there can be no denial. All you have to do is look, for instance, at the um, so-called Gedenkbuch, which is a publication of the German federal government which clearly shows name by name everybody who was murdered. So how can you say it didn't happen? Irrefutable. Irrefutable. Well, one of the most difficult interviews I ever did was with a Holocaust denier who yeah. looked him in the eye and, and he said, well, they were all put away because yeah. there was an outbreak of, yeah. of typhus. So, you know, all you have to do is look at this Gedenkbuch, which is a record of every last name of people who were murdered. Mr. Liebman, I, I had the good pleasure of speaking with Elie Wiesel, who is the Nobel Peace Prize yeah. uh, recipient and a Holocaust survivor, who was on this program several months ago. And during that program, he did read from his book, Night. Yeah. This is the passage he had to read. Never shall I forget that night, the first night in camp, which has turned my life into one long night seven times cursed and seven times sealed. Never shall I forget that smoke. Never shall I forget the little faces of the children whose bodies I saw turned into wreaths of smoke beneath a silent blue sky. Never shall I forget those flames which consumed my faith forever. Never shall I forget that nocturnal silence which deprived me for all eternity of the desire to live. Never shall I forget those moments which murdered my God and my soul, turned my dreams to dust. Never shall I forget those things, even if I am condemned to live as long as God himself. Never. And never should the world be allowed no. to forget Elie no. Wiesel so eloquently describing the horror of his time in the camps. Your emotions as you hear him, does it bring it all back to him? Well, he is a wonderful spokesman for all of us. But your personal reflections, does it bring it back to you? Of what you experienced? Yes, up to a point, but don't forget one thing. I did not ex experience the horrors of the Eastern camps. You were I, in a camp in France. I was in a camp in France. 
I was lucky that I was potation mark transferred out of this camp and ended up in Le Chambon sur Lignon, which is a Huguenot village which saved three and a half thousand people and they helped me escape into Switzerland. So, you know, I have a different uh, outlook because of Le Chambon and the people there who were out to help us. And how, what did they do? How did they help you to survive? Uh, they, uh, they provided me to start out with, with uh, false papers, false IDs, and they um, sent me uh, by train to a village in the, high, in the uh, French Alps, and from there a young boy took a group of uh, four or five teenagers up into the mountains and then said, all you have to do is go down here now, which wasn't so simple, it was well b beyond the tree line. And when you are down there, you will be in Switzerland. So that was a very courageous and heroic on the part of these people to help Absolutely. you escape? Absolutely. And when you go today to Le Chambon, these people cannot understand the, the fuss which is being made about them. We didn't do anything, they say. How do you explain today, Mr. Liebman, the, the rise in anti-Semitism? The numbers are staggering on how much hatred there is toward Jewish Economic people. conditions. Explain that. Well, look, if the, um, in the, uh, the ec economy is good and people haven't got to struggle, it is the, the anti-Semitism will be low. The moment there are problems ec economically, the anti-Semitism always has risen. You have seen it in Germany, you're seeing it now. That's, those were some of the conditions that, that led to, led to, to all the costs. Yeah, absolutely that the Jewish people in Germany economically were doing better than the others. They were doing, they were middle and upper middle class, a lot of them. What would you say so many years later, and you, you've been liberated, you lived it, you survived it, you belong to an organization of, of survivors and descendants. Uh, what is the major mission of this organization? Well, we try to help people. When people call us, they need help with this or with that. I, I, I usually get these calls and I direct them where to go, to get help. And who are these people? Are they, they are people who have survived. The numbers I know are dwindling now. Well, we still have in the United States about 70, between 75 and 77,000 people. However, uh, many families don't notify us that people have passed away. And on the ultra-Orthodox, they are not really interested in joining our organization. Tell me, how would you experience then? How did that change your life? And here it is so many years later. Well, you're well, look, you're married, you I'm have married, family. I have a daughter. And look, Le Chambon, the people there helped uh, the dark outlook I would have had normally because they were out to help. But it was said but God living under do that this. oppression, living under that, I mean, even though you, you were a young man then, yes. it, it had to severely impact you and also the loss of your, your parents. Yeah. Well, look, I, we became, my generation became very streetwise. We had to go to school, we had to face anti-Semitism. And I learned something very early on. You cannot run away. For instance, in my high school, there was a custom that we would go uh, for a few days to, uh, um, to uh, somewhere uh, to play soccer. And this is where I picked a fight with somebody I could handle. And from that moment on forward, we were ne I was never harassed again in my class. It taught you me something. You stood up for yourself. Yeah. And you also survived a yeah. very terrible yeah. time yeah. in, in, in fact, history. In uh, fact, when I went, when I was caught on the border in Switzerland, the next morning I was told, "We are sending you back because on the border they send people back." And I went right back into Switzerland, and I made it the second time.
Thank goodness. Let me just put up quick, real quickly on the web page if people want more okay. information about the American gathering of Jewish Holocaust survivors and their descendants. And there is the web page, amgathering.org. Max Liebman, thank you for joining us for your reflections on this Holocaust Remembrance Day. You're welcome. And that'll do it for our program this week. If you have any comments or wish to see this broadcast again, log on to our website, pix11.com slash news close up. Next week, we'll be on at 6.30 Saturday evening, as well as Sunday morning with our special guest, Timothy Cardinal Dolan. I'm Marvin Scott. Thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, everyone. We are done. <laughs>